terribly new idea, kind of an old idea. So before we move on to 10.6 and uh, start making a little like one more layer of complexity, uh, ask you some questions about these fractions. What happens if I multiply this fraction by eight? Yes, what's left if I multiply this fraction by eight? Yeah? Just x. Just x. We get eight divided by eight, and x is left. What happens if I multiply this fraction by 17? X plus two. What's that? X plus two. X plus two is left, because we get 17 divided by seven. That's one and one. That's x plus two times one. That's x plus two. Divided by one, that's still x plus two. What happens when I multiply this by 25? Left. You just get 2x minus 5. You just get 2x minus 5. 25 divided by 5. We get 2x minus 5 times 1. That doesn't change anything. Divided by 1. That also doesn't change anything. We're just left with 2x minus 5. Okay. Let's say we take this pattern, you know, this, the same thing that we have been doing, and let's make a rule. Okay. So what's the rule that we can write about fractions? Okay, so let's say if you multiply a fraction by its denominator, okay, so we started it. If you do that, then what? Sarah? We've done it three times, multiply a fraction by its denominator, then Then the let's, let's just write it just like that. Then you get the numerator. Let's just say the numerator is left. The numerator is, is the only thing left. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple idea, and uh, in in saying this explicitly, I'm telling you pretty much just what to do. If we don't like the denominator, we don't want the denominator, whether that denominator is getting in the way of x being by itself, or the denominator is not very nice looking, we don't really know how to work with it, like if x is in the denominator, we don't want that denominator. If you want to cancel out the denominator and just leave the numerator, we can multiply any fraction by its denominator no matter what the denominator looks like. So, we have 5 over x. Multiply this by x. <coughs> What's left? Five. Right? You just wrote the rule. If you multiply a fraction by its denominator, then you get the numerator left. Get the numerator. The numerator is left. When you multiply by the denominator of a fraction, this divided by itself, just like any number divided by itself, 8 divided by 8, 16 divided by 16, doesn't matter, we get 1. Okay? 5 times 1 divided by 1 is 5. Or 2 plus x divided by 2 plus x, a number divided by itself. Just like 8 divided by 8 or negative 5 divided by negative 5. Okay. 2 plus x divided by 2 plus x is 1. This is 1. This is 1. 17 times 1 divided by 1 is 17. All I'm trying to get across to you is that this rule is true. If you multiply a fraction by its own denominator, that denominator, and you're just left with the numerator. Okay? So that's the idea. So that's, that's the basis of the cross product property. If you want to prove the cross product property, just take advantage of that fact. If you multiply a fraction by its denominator, the denominator is gone. And it's canceled out. It's been reduced to 1. Uh, but if I go 3.6,
it's very, very similar to 3.5, except for uh, The way in which it's different, well, you tell me, how is this different from a proportion of 3.5? Well, it's not Do you want x in the denominator? No. Do you want a denominator of x? No. Do you want the denominator to have x in it? No. No. No, all three times. Ethan? Multiply by the reciprocal of 4 over x. Yes. Okay. x over 4. Okay, what's going to happen when we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal? Cancels out. Everything cancels out. Something's got to be gone. Uh, it can't just be a black hole of nothing. Yes. What's left when we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal? Oh. What? 1 over x. 1 is 1. We got. Fine. This is 4x, right? Oh. 4 times x over 4 times x. This is a number divided by itself. What is that? One. 1. Something divided by itself is always 1. If we multiply something by its reciprocal, we get 1. By its multiplicative inverse, we get 1. So we have to multiply by x over 4 here. So uh, that's 1 and that's 2. So we get x times 1 over 2 times 3. That's 6. We have x over 6. Sides. Why? Why would you do that on this side? Because you want to get rid of the denominator, so you have x by itself. Beautiful. X equals 6. Multiply by 6 on both sides. Just sit down. Could we Could we do something differently? We have to multiply by x over 4? No. What can we do instead? The thing that we really don't like about this is that x is in the denominator. We just like to handle that issue. If we don't like something that's in the denominator, how can we cancel it out? Okay, so this is just like a spitballing here. Okay, spitball. I love All right. spitballing. So, <laughs> so doing what I did before, we take. What did you do before? Cross. <laughs> Cross multiply, so you get 3 times 4, which is 12. 12 equals 2x. Uh -huh. Then you divide by 2 on each side, so x equals 6. Feel free to use cross multiplication until you can prove that it works. Yes. Uh, don't suggest it as an idea. Fine. Okay? We all know cross multiplication will work. I'm not saying no. <laughs> you asked for another way, so I gave you another way. Okay, let me specify. Another way besides what is you equivalent to magic because we don't know how it's working. If you can justify it, and it's not that difficult, and I believe you can do it, then do it. There. Multiply by 3 over 2. Multiply by 3 over 2. Yeah. If I multiply by 3 over 2, I get 1 over here. Will that solve my x's in the denominator problem? I want to solve my x's in the denominator problem. I don't want a denominator with x in it. You can do what you did on 3, and then you can take, so now you have like what? Two over, two over three um, equals x over four. So you do like, okay, you cross multiply by x. Like, you do like, two, never mind, I'm stop talking. Hunter? Um, you could do times x on both sides. Just x. Yeah, just x. Just multiply by x. Because when we multiply a fraction by its denominator, what are we left with? The, the numerator. Right? This is, I'm talking about this rule back here. When we multiply a fraction by its denominator, then we get the numerator. So we're doing that. We multiply this fraction by its denominator of x, all you're left with is 4. 
plus, right? But x is not in the denominator on the right side, so maybe that's solving a problem. We'll multiply by x over here. We have 2 thirds x equals 4. Can you get x by itself? No. Divide by 2 thirds? Okay, we don't like dividing by fractions, right? So when we divide by 2 thirds, we could instead times by 3 over 2. Times by 3 over 2. 4 over 1 times 3 over 2 cancels. 2 times 3 is 6. In 3.5, we didn't like denominators being with our x's. We wanted to get rid of those denominators that were with the x so that the x could be by itself. In this case, x is in the denominator, and we don't like that. We don't like the denominator to have x. So we also have a, mot a, a motivation to cancel out that denominator. We'll do that. Okay? Um, let's go a little bit more into the mix. just subtracting numbers out of the denominator. Like if, you can't, if you can't justify the cross product property, we have a real hard time justifying just subtracting numbers out of the denominator. Don't do things just because you want to. That's why I want you to justify things, because you have no, no way to justify subtracting a number out of the denominator just out of the blue. It's not a mathematical idea to subtract a number from the denominator. Yeah? Here's the hint. It's the same as every other equation we've done so far in that we don't want what's in the denominator to be in the denominator. We don't want that denominator. How do we get rid of that denominator? Nathan? Times r plus 1. Multiply by the denominator. Right? At the very beginning of this lesson, right after the quiz, right after we handed in the homework, I wrote all those fractions up there. We multiplied by the denominator of each one of those fractions, and what happened to those fractions? What happened to those fractions? 
Denominator. Denominator got canceled. It's a numerator. So if we cancel out the denominator and the numerator, we go to the left. So if we multiply by r plus 1 on both sides, on this side, we get r plus 1 divided by r plus 1. And now we just have r times 1 divided by 1 is r. On this side, we just have r. On this side, we need to multiply by r plus 1. Okay. And then uh, that may not look very good. But at least r is not in the denominator anymore. Okay, so here's what we have. 8 times r plus 1 over 12. So now r is not in the denominator. That's good news. That was something, I mean, what is something you can do mathematically? I've let you run with every idea you have that is mathematically Lily? Sure, you can distribute the 8. 8r eight plus 8 over 12 equals r. Multiply by 12 over 8, certainly you could. You could. Right? This, if we go back up here, we see we have. What's that? No, like when it's like r over 8 times r. Just like this? Could you just multiply 12 over 8? Or would you have to do r plus You could. That's just there's two different ideas, so we can just work both of them. So instead of distributing, we'll multiply by 12 over 8. See if we like that better. Do it. See what it is, and see if you like it better. So um, if you multiply this side by 12 over 8, Multiply by 12 over 8. And this side by 12 over 8, making sure that we realize how we can line it up. And then we get r plus 1. 8 divided by 8 is 12. Divided by 12. We just get r plus 1 mm -hmm. equals 12r over 8. So now you've seen two different ideas. Run with the one you like the most and change it somehow. Getting R more and more by itself. Anybody can switch up anything for either of these two approaches. Derek? Can you multiply by 12R? Multiply by 12R here? Yeah. Okay, we'll multiply by 12R. Let's see what happens. We'll multiply by 8. We'll multiply by 8, not 12R. Right, then we get the denominator. If we multiply by 8, then the denominator goes. Yeah, and then we get the Multiply this by 8. Right? Yeah, multiply the whole thing by 8. Okay, so we have 8 times R plus 1 equals 12R. Yeah. And then we can. Ethan? Could you subtract R from the right side then? Subtract R from here? Yeah. Well, what would 12r minus r be? 11r? It would be 11r. Do you want this to be 11r and this to be 8 times r plus 1 minus r? No. Oh, no. No, we don't. I mean, could you just distribute the fact that you distribute it and it'd be 8r plus 8 and then combine that terms and then you get 20r plus 1? Whoa. Where's that? Where Slow down. 20r? <laughs> if you combine those terms, you learn that. Come on, Got the equal sign here. Yeah. We had a quiz with this very kind of error on it where someone just took 8R plus 12R. This 8R is over here. This 12R is on the other side of the equation. Divide by 8R. Divide by 8R? Lily? Over here? Yeah. Divide by 8. So like multiply by 1 over 8. You can do that. Maybe if you want to do that, maybe it'd be easier if we went back and, and didn't have distributed it yet. Have it distributed. We can multiply by 1 over 8. 1 over 8. We get r plus 1 over 12 equals r over 8. Come on. You come on. 
We have denominator that we don't want. We don't want a denominator of d plus 13 or a denominator of d minus 13. We don't know how to deal with those. Ideas. Really? Uh, multiply by d minus 13. Multiply by d minus 13? Yeah. Okay, if we multiply by d minus 13, then d minus 13 divided by d minus 13 is 1. 6 times 1 divided by 1 is 6. D minus 13 on this side. You get 18 times D minus 13 over D plus 13. I would suggest before you worry about anything else, recognize that you have a denominator with D in it and you don't want D in the denominator. What? Minus what? D. Minus D? Okay, let's subtract D on both sides. Minus D. Okay, in order to subtract D from this fraction, when we subtract fractions, what do we need? Common denominator. Common denominator. What's that denominator going to be? D plus 13. D plus 13. They have to be exactly the same, not some the same, but all the way the same. So this needs to have a denominator of d plus 13. Minus d, maybe we should do over d plus 13. So then we do the same thing on both sides. Yes. How's it looking? Do you like it? No. It's going the way you want to. No, you no. It's okay. Sorry. Not saying it was a bad idea. I'm saying it didn't work out exactly how you thought. You forgot about the common denominator thing. It's important to have a common denominator. And when we make it have a common denominator, it turns out more difficult than we thought. Ashley? Like, the other way? The other way? Mm -hmm. How'd you do it? Uh -huh. So you cross multiply. Why could you do that? about this quite a bit. Nathan said something similar at the beginning of class. He said, I don't know. That's how the book told me. Okay. Well, now I don't follow orders. You said. <laughs> <laughs> that idea? I think maybe you 
should change the, the, the rule to selectively follow. <laughs> Maybe the orders that I'm giving are a good one. Maybe you don't think they are. Maybe you should just keep on multiplication the rest of your life. So don't use the stuff out of the book written by professionals. Uh, whatever you think, man. Okay, I'll listen to you, not the book. Um, okay, so we don't want this denominator of d plus 13, right? Will you please help me? Get rid of this d plus 13. Yes. Multiply by d plus 13. Multiply both sides by d plus 13. Okay, now let's let's take a second and look at this. What did we do? We cross multiply, but not in a way that we say, I don't know, the book just told me. We do it because we have to. We do it because we have to. <laughs> we multiply each side by the denominator, like of all the denominators. We multiply by all of the denominators on both sides. Multiply by this denominator and by this denominator on both sides. And what happened? On this side, the d plus 13s cancel, but we're left with a d minus 13. On this side, the d minus 13s are canceled, but we're left with a d plus 13. That's cross multiplication, like, but in a way that's not just called a property that we can use it. Okay? Like I said, you are free to do it however you want, as long as it's mathematical, and it, it works and it's true and all that kind of stuff. Use it all you want. But I'm not gonna stand up here as a professional and someone who loves math and just tell you, just cross multiply. Why does cross multiply work? Don't worry about that. Just cross multiply. Okay? I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to say, this is why it works. Right? There's justification of why it works. We just multiply both sides by both denominators. We did it in a couple steps, but that's exactly what we did, and that's exactly what cross multiplication is. David? With your hand up like this, you didn't have anything to say? That's well, what you were doing. I don't know. I, just, I thought like, maybe I could. Ethan. Help. <laughs> yeah, we got even. I forgot. Okay, that's fine. Of course. Tell you. Oh, I can't remember the technical name for it. Distributing Z and thirteen. Oh, it's what is that called? Distribute. Yeah. Eighteen D minus eighteen times thirteen. I got this. Two hundred thirty-four. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Six now, distribute the six. Sixty plus, I don't know. Thirteen. Seventy-eight? No. I think seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. I'm going to save us a little bit of conversation here. 18D minus 60, you get 12D minus 234, equals 78. Twelve D equals three hundred and two. Divided by twelve D is equal to three hundred two divided by twelve. Is that about nice? Twenty six.